Yes, welcome into the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas as we get set to bring you the third of three first round matchups on the day here at the 2024 Mountain West Women's Basketball Championships. It is the 6-11 matchup and it is Boise State and Utah State for an opportunity to advance to the quarterfinals and take on Wyoming tomorrow. Nate Kreckman, Tammy Blackburn, we're your crew this afternoon here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. A Utah State team coming in as the 11 seed. A challenging year, but an opportunity to play spoiler today against a Boise State team that has won this tournament five times and features a fantastic sophomore class that can flat out shoot the basketball. Tammy Blackburn, Utah State's gonna have their hands full here today. Well, they've gotta be ready to guard, right? They've gotta be ready to close out. They gotta be ready to deny touches and do everything they can to limit this Boise State team. Listen, this is a confident bunch in Boise State, but Utah State coming in here, and you've said it all tournament long since we started this morning. It's a clean slate for everybody. You never know what happens in tournament time. And Utah State comes in, they know they got a chance. In Indeed they do. Everybody is 0-0 to start tournament play. Utah State is led by their outstanding junior guard, Cheyenne Stubbs, scoring, in, uh, scoring 16 points a game coming into this matchup. For Boise State, it's Natalie Pasco and company looking to shoot the lights out here in Las Vegas, starting lineups when we come back. Six eleven matchup here in the Mountain West Women's Basketball Tournament. It's Boise State and Utah State. Let's get you starting lineups first for the 11 seed, Utah State. They are led by Cheyenne Stubbs, leading scorer at 16 points per game, along with four rebounds and a couple assists. She is joined in the starting lineup by the junior, Ivory Finley. Sammy Sugataraga out of Orem, Utah. Macy Smith is the junior transfer from Cal State Northridge. And Alizé Verdun in her first year at Utah State. The Aggies are coached by Kayla Ard in year number four in Logan, Utah, 5-24 and 24 on the year. For the Boise State Broncos, the five-time Mountain West Tournament champions, they are led by their all-conference guard, Natalie Pasco, scoring 13 points per game, top 10 in the Mountain West. She is joined in the starting lineup by the point guard, Mary Kay Nero, the senior from Beaverton, Oregon, and Maya Hansen, a sophomore out of Billings, Montana. The front court for Boise State, Elodie Lalotte, and the Mountain West all-defensive big Abby Muse. Gordy Presnell is coaching Boise State, and Tammy Gordy is going for yet another milestone today. He is chasing win number 750 in his illustrious career, now spanning 37 years. What's not to love about Gordy Presnell and the way that he is carried himself throughout his entire career. Congratulations to him and all his success, and he's not done. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Gordy Presnell in year number 19 at Boise State. Finley a drive, Lalotte kept her verticality, no foul, and Nero pushes the tempo. And that is Mary Kay Nero's role on this team. She feeds. It down low to Muse, but Sugataraga swats it away. Out of bounds, it's Boise State ball. Mary Kay Nero plays with a high motor, a special pace, a classic pass first point guard for Boise State. She sets the table for everybody. The lots turn around is too strong, and Sugataraga chases it down, gets it ahead to the leading scorer for Utah State. That's Cheyenne Stubbs. Good pass around the horn early on for Utah State, looking to get in transition in the corner. Spot up shooters, you gotta be ready to get back if you are Boise State. Shooters are coming. Entry pass from Muse down to Lalotte, and she lays it in. 6-1 is Lalotte. Gets to that space on that opposite side. Good ball movement. Both buckets from the post so far, Muse and Lalotte for Boise State. Always been impressed with Boise State and their passing. They think about the open player. They think about a higher percentage shot. Quick catch. 
catch and fire three and Maya Hansen. Did that ball hit a dead spot in the back of the rim? You know, it did. And, and a little shoulder shrug for a little drama after that shot went in by Hansen. You got to love it. Looked like a chip that landed on a soggy green. Giant stubs the answer. Top of the key leading scorer for this Aggie team. Well, get used to it. She's going to give you 33 minutes and 16 points a game. Suga Taraga knocks it out of bounds. And Kayla Ard wants this team in transition. Layups and threes. Analytically sound basketball is what Utah State needs to play. And I think the biggest thing, Tammy, they just got to see some shots go in early. It was a good sign to see Stubbs hit that three. A block from behind. And there's the Aggies out in transition. Finley will step into a triple. Front iron no good. Pasco chases down the long rebound. Utah State is in a zone, and they're going to move out to the short corner, and that's how you beat a zone. You work inside the seams. Lalat gets out to that short corner, and that free thing frees things up. Boise State off to a really good start. They've got a six-point lead over Utah State. Well, Tammy, we knew the game plan for Boise State was get the ball into the post and crash the boards. Well, that's worked out awfully good so far. Out rebounding Utah State 5-2 to two just in the first two and a half minutes. And buckets for Lalat and Abby Muse, who already has four points here in the early going. Excellent start for Gordy Presnell's team. Yeah, and you see how unselfish they are moving the ball around. And, you, you know, Utah State's coming out into a zone. And... You got to find the seams in that zone. And Boise State also showing Utah State a zone as well. Both teams zoning each other. Smith had a good look at a three up top, but left it well short. To attack that zone. Muse has it down low, kicks it back outside. Pasco got a look, good look. That's her shot. Couldn't get connect on that time. Natalie Pasco, a 40% three-point shooter. She's in, been in a bit of a shooting slump coming into this game, just 18% from the field over the last three games. Lalat rebounds that Finley miss. Cross-court pass nearly stolen. Muse inside out, narrow, open three. That doesn't foul. Boy, another shot that took a funky bounce off of that rim, Tammy. Finding that dead spot there. Blocked by Lalat, out of bounds. So it looks like Boise State might be mixing things up on a make. They're in a zone, maybe. Certainly on a miss, they're in a player-to-player -player matching up on Utah State. Let's see if Utah State can continue to adjust offensively to what Boise State is showing them. Gracie Johnson just checked in. She got fouled on the arm. Foul is on Elodie Lalotte. That's her first. First team foul on Boise State. Gracie Johnson will go to the line, a 91% free throw shooter. The story of Gracie Johnson, she is a legacy. Her brother Isaac Johnson plays on the Utah State men's team. Both her father and her grandfather played at Utah State. Yeah, it's certainly a legacy there. And, you know, following in the footsteps, Gracie at 6'6, six, six, just a freshman. Tatum Thompson in the game for the first time today. Excellent ball movement. Entry pass. Thompson and Stubbs got tied up. That was Trista Hull trying to feed it down low to Thompson. She's in the game as well, the junior from Yakima, Washington. Averaging 4.5 rebounds a game this year for Boise State. Boise State, one of the four teams that went 10-8 and eight in conference, but they're playing today in first-round action, as did San Diego State, who we saw earlier today. Nevada and Colorado State by tiebreakers. They got the first-round buys. Boy, Boise State so active defensively, and Nero knocks it away from Macy Smith, gets the block. A couple of shot blockers for Boise State there. Not sure individually who they'll give that to. Maybe a team block. 
Nero steps into an open three. Gracie Johnson went up, got the rebound, but she got called for traveling. She was looking to get the outlet pass and stutter stepped. First of all, good ball movement by Boise State. They're moving the ball quickly up the court, but you see them play their offense, Nate, with some tempo, and they're really trying to make Utah shift defensively, whether they're in player to player or that zone. And you can attack that zone with that quick tempo, especially through ball reversal. That's where that attack and those seams are gonna open. Lydia Knapp in the game now for Utah State. Isabella Tenedo in as well. Short baseline jump shot, no. Thompson went up, got the rebound, tie up, possession arrow to Boise State. Broncos were 10 and eight in the Mountain West this year, Tammy, ninth time in 10 years that they have won 10 or more games in conference play. They're the only program to have done that. The consistency that Gordy Press now has put together and this excellent young core that he has right now has the Broncos well positioned for the future as Tatum Thompson will go to the line off the inbound. Foul was on Johnson. Yeah, and at 6'6", Gracie Johnson, especially on that inbound play, as long as she doesn't get spun around, she really just can stand and put her long arms. That wingspan can be a definite presence there to try to at least disrupt the shots taken by Boise State. No need for her to leave her feet and foul. Second free throw coming up for Thompson. She's been playing well. Averaging 12.6 rebounds over the last five games. Both those numbers well above her season averages. And right now the Broncos doubling up the Aggies. Utah State's got some tempo to their offense. But they turn it over. Three ball on the way, no. Offensive rebound, the putback is there. Trista Hull goes up, snags it, and lays it back in. That's the thing about transition there. Actually, it was a takeaway and a steal, and they were running the other way. Boise State quickly worked, and you better watch out for Hull. She can crash the offensive glass. That could be the nightmare for Utah State. Thompson the block. Shot clock winding down now for Utah State. Cross court pass tip. Three ball on the way. And the weak side rebound there for Danny Bays. Kayla Ard, not even six minutes into this game, has already used 10 players. Searching for any lineup to be able to work here. Sky Miller with the basketball. The transfer from Eastern Arizona College, originally from Alaska. A drive and a foul, Tanyedo was hit by Hull. Suga Taraga back, Bridget Mullings back for Utah State. Suga Taraga is just so impressive. Hard working, never takes a play off. I mean, she gives, she lays out every game, gives everything. You know what you're going to get. 100% effort from her. She is a team first attitude player. She is one that you would want to have on your team. Kayla Ard said, great kid, plays hard, needs to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the floor. That's the key for Sammy Sugataraga, only Utah native on this team, by the way. Back come the Broncos, up six inside four minutes. In rhythm, Hole stepped into it. Confident looking jump shot from the mid range. I'm okay with that shot being quick in the 30 second shot clock. I mean, Hole, she's got, you're right, it was a rhythm shot. She had just come off a good bucket, confident, feeling good. Get up and step up and take that. That's yours. Nat put it on the floor, had it blocked. That was Hull, second leading shot blocker on this team. Whip to the corner. Pasco, she'll catch that and fire. Collision over on the weak side. They'll get napped for that one. 
Yeah, she knocked into Hull. Hull hit the floor hard right there. Tenyedo will go to the bench. Stubbs returns. Macy Smith in, and Sugataraga will sit down. Nice inbounds. Good look for Thompson. Had it halfway down. Mullings too strong. Rebound tapped. And finally controlled by Hull. But she got hit by Mullings. First on Bridget Mullings. Transfer from UC San Diego. Spent two years at UC San Diego. Her first year at Utah State this season. Thompson put it on the floor. Fall away. Rims off. Both teams on a bit of a drought right now. Mullings, good footwork. But couldn't get it, get it to go. Yeah, Utah State, O of their last 10. Not a field goal in the last five minutes and 27 seconds. Yeah, just a one for 14 start. Right there on the spot. Thompson retrieves it and puts it in. And meanwhile, Boise State having their way. They're shooting 33%, 7 of 20. Neither team shooting well from downtown. 2 of 12 combined. This rebounds in the favor of Boise State. It's 17 to 10. Boy, lid on the bucket here for Utah State as we hit the two-minute mark. Tatum Thompson called for traveling. She thought she got pushed yeah. first before the travel. A lot of contact there, but no whistle. Boise State gives it back to Utah State. 16 to 6, Broncos by 10. Boise State victorious both times against Utah State this season. In fact, won the two games by an average of 25 and a half points. And one of the keys in this matchup all year, Tammy, was that Boise State's defense has been bothering Utah State. Not that time, Macy Smith. Well, they got it to the inside and then kick back out. That's what you do. You attack the zone right through the middle, through the two guards. Somebody steps in, takes your place after you attack. You kick it out. But meanwhile, I will tell you, Nate, I am impressed with the way that Boise State going right back down, and they are getting quick hits. Third assist already for Abby Muse. Showing off that pocket passing game. Bill Brown misses. Two for 17 now for Utah State from the field. With the ball really popping for Boise State right now. It has good energy. Muse to lot again. That's the fourth assist. And I believe the third time that that combination has connected. So six assists on nine makes for Boise State. They're sharing the ball. Good passes, good tempo. That ball has the energy that it needs. Stubbs, step back, tough two. Danny Bays came down with it. A sophomore from Brisbane, Australia. Not West all freshman a year ago. Turnover, two on one the other way. Nap to Stubbs, missed the layup, got it back, puts it in. Great pick, great effort there by Nap. And then how about the good follow up? Broncos have made their last three, quarter winding down. Elbow jump shot, Hanson drills it. 22-11, Boise State doubling up Utah State. After 10 minutes have gone by, second quarter coming up next here on the Mountain West Network. Strong first quarter out of Boise State, shooting 44%, 10 of 23, and route to an 11-point lead on Utah State. We're back with you at the Thomas & Mack. My name is Nate Kreckman. My partner is Tammy Blackburn. Two games down, third of three on the day, 
in the first round of the 2024 Mountain West Women's Championships. Fresno State and San Diego State, our two winners earlier today. Opening possession, second quarter. Elodie Lalat not given a lot of space to Alizé Verdan. 14 points in the paint for Boise State. They're getting the looks. And this is how they're doing it. They're getting inside the zone and they're making it 16 points in the paint. They make one pass, you think they're gonna shoot it and they make yet the other pass. We've said it before, Muse to Lalat. Lalat now with eight, Muse up to five assists. Abby Muse, leading rebounder on this team, second leading rebounder in the Mountain West. She doesn't have any rebounds yet today, but she does have five assists. Livia Knapp stepped on the sideline. I see that Gordy Presnell is, did not give Hanson the start of the second quarter. She played all 10 minutes, Nate, in that first quarter. Gave it everything she had. One other note on that first quarter, Tammy. Kayla Hard used 12 different players in the first. Turnaround is up and good. That time it was Lalat to Muse returning the favor. Timeout Utah State, timeout on the floor. Broncos by 15. Boise State, a 15-point lead. 18 of their 26 points, Tammy, have come in the paint so far. And that damage pretty much all coming courtesy of Elodie Lalat and Abby Muse. They have combined for 14 points and seven assists so far. That kind of production, the way they're sharing the basketball, the interior passing, a perfect start out of the post players for Boise State. Well, you just saw the replay right there, and they're just, you know, they're able to isolate, and they're, they're able to get that space inside Utah State's zone. I do, I do love the way that they are sharing the ball. Eight assists on 12 made buckets. So a quick timeout to start this second quarter. Let's see what Utah State comes up with coming out of the timeout. And I can't imagine that was what they drew up in the huddle. No, that was way too much on that pass by Stubbs. And she was paying, she was passing to Knapp, who is 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, Good Look press break. Yep. And they're looking over their right and left shoulder to see where their next pass is. Offensive rebound for Boise State. But it was turned back over. Lindsay Lavrovich into the game, trying to get it back out to Lalat. Lavrovich, a junior from Gig Harbor, Washington. Her minutes have been up of late as this season has gone along. Verdan isolated. Now she gets it back out, Smith. Tough pocket pass, too much traffic. Narrow, turning the Jets on up the floor and another bucket in transition for Boise State, the lead 17. What a move. First basket for Lavrovich. She's showing you that she is a two-sport athlete. Volleyball player, basketball obviously as well. Athletic move there on that last one. Oh, nice shot. Big time three from Sugataraga. Well, let's see if that can help get Utah State going down 14. Well, they needed that. Now they need to stop. There's a pick. Smith lost it out of bounds, but they will say it is Utah State basketball. Good steal there by Macy Smith. Cal State Northridge transfer. Scored in double figures five times this year. Kayla Ard just glowing with praise, talking about Smith. Coachable, hardworking, kind of player you need on your basketball team. Stubbs, tough shot. Lalat the rebound. Muse trying to kick to the corner. Bays back up top, Lalat. 
Quick ball reversals for Boise State. Nice take. Yeah. Stepped up and took one. Verdon took the charge. She read it, anticipated it, was not afraid to draw the contact. You love that and appreciate that about your teammate. When defensively, they're going to step in, take some hard contact, not afraid, not backing down from that. First foul on Lindsey Labrovich. Under seven minutes now left in the first half. Sugataraga leaves a scream for Stubbs. She curled around it, but couldn't hit off the dribble. Nero left all alone. Muse the follow. Abby Muse now with eight. She is four of five from the field. Sugataraga had it stripped away. Nero, a three on one. Oh, good defense right there from Jeez. Finley. But once again, a loose ball gets gobbled up by Boise State, and Abby Muse was right there. Yeah, the 6 3 senior out of Brentwood, California. How great has her career been? She started all of last year nine points, nine rebounds. Mountain West leader. Boy, the seas parted for Ivory Finley, but she missed the bunny. Out on the break, Bays in rhythm, no. Wow, what a rebound. Lavrovich went up, snatched that thing out of the air and put it back in. Standing ovation from the coaching staff, all of them up off the bench and her teammates as well. Love the effort and a big smile by she Lavrovich. She was soaring <laughs> through the air on that one. Suga Taraga got an open look, doesn't fall. Utah State just four of 27. They trail it by 20. Elise Verdun the rebound from French Guiana, Salt Lake Community College. She's athletic, plays with a ton of it, energy. Hurt her ankle in the last game against UNLV and still sort of recovering from that. Boy, Muse picked up her dribble in the backcourt and Gordy Presnell has to call timeout. 30 seconds second timeout. Time out. Gordy didn't, really didn't want to do it, but Muse picked her dribble up and that became the problem. At that point, she doesn't have anywhere to go because Stubbs was denying. Let's go back to that miss and look at Lavrovich. I mean, that was, that was pretty amazing. She came in from that weak side, read it perfectly off the rim. You know, I talked to assistant coach Carrie Ann Ramirez from Boise State this week and you know, this is a young team that is still sort of gelling, hasn't reached the ceiling of maybe what they're capable of, but she talked about this team. She said they're great off the floor, and they just got to get all of that energy, all that chemistry to come together on the court, and when they do, this team could return to the kind of heights that Boise State saw with the dynasty at the end of the 2010s. They won the Mountain West Tournament in 2015 and then four-peated from 17 to 20, the only Mountain West program to ever do that. Gordy Presnell does such a nice job, tied for second in conference history, by the way, with 18 wins at the Mountain West Conference Tournament. You know, coaches like Elaine Elliott, Don Flanagan, just to name a couple, that's incredible company. Pasco a three. First triple of the game for Natalie Pasco, all conference. She connects from downtown, pushes it to a 23-point game. Johnson got it over to Verdon. Good hustle from Utah State, but nothing to show for it. Alyssa Christensen into the game now for Boise State. Nero got it back to her. Stepping inside the arc, mid-range, Maya Hansen, no good. These teams running, they've got to be gassed. They just keep running up and down the floor. Not a lot of game stoppage in this second quarter. Especially Tammy Mary Kay Nero, every time she touches the ball, 
She just puts the pedal to the floor every single time running up the up the court. Nice wrap around pass. Oh, but a big time block from Johnson. Pasco, she'll take another three. Back iron, no good. Smith came down with it. Ahead to Ivory Finley. Foul is on Pasco. First personal on Natalie Pasco. Good footwork by Verdon, just couldn't finish. Wide open in the corner, Pasco. Didn't miss many of those. Verdon chased it down. And Utah State is saying thank you very much for not making that shot because before that shot they were shooting 46% was Boise State. Utah State, meanwhile, Nate, shooting just 13%. It's been sluggish for them. Four of 32. And once again, there is Nero turning on the Jets, getting up the floor. Quick ball movement. A couple of touch passes. Got her defender in the air, out to Pasco. Ball swings around the key. Arrow left it short. Let's see if Utah State can stop this scoring drought, which is over five minutes at this point. 9-0 run right now for Boise State over the last four minutes plus. Finley can't get it to fall. Yankees now just four of 33. That's 12% from the field. Get free throws for Maya Hansen. Substitutions now for Utah State. Tatum Thompson returns as well for Boise State as Alyssa Christensen will go sit down. Maya Hansen, an 85% free throw shooter. Coaches said she's been tearing it up as of late. Scored a season high 26 in the home loss to Air Force eight days ago. Boise State has lost three straight coming into this tournament. Trying to right the ship here today, and they have had an excellent first half in those efforts. Bridget Mullings back now for Utah State. Allie Weta into the game out of Castle Rock, Colorado. Sister Kendall plays at Colorado. Very good player, very good defender in Kendall Weta. Love me some Kendall Weta. Just saw her the other day. And the shooting woes continue now for Utah State. Oh, Cheyenne Stubbs with the steal in the backcourt. Picked off Hanson. Snaps a 10-0 run for Boise State. You could be up by 22 and Gordy Presnell is like, I don't like that. I want us to be sharp and clean all the time, but he does like that. It was a sharp and clean press break. Trista Hull, an easy two. Boise State has put up 40 in this first half. Stubbs catch and shoot three. Boy, Cheyenne Stubbs. Carrying this team right now. When she is in rhythm, she is dangerous. Stubbs has 10 of the 19 points now for Utah State. Pasco too strong there. And Stubbs will slow it down. Chance to take the last shot of the half. Dubs a crossover, step back three. It does not foul, and Utah State unable to cut into the Boise State lead before the end of the half. The Broncos 40, the Aggies 9.
It's been a fun one here in Las Vegas on day one of the 2024 Mountain West Women's Basketball Championship. At the break, Boise State up 21 over Utah State. And boy, has it been an exciting day. We saw Fresno State win and we saw San Diego State come out with the dub. It's been a fun one here at the Thomas and Mack Center. Well, I'm Bridget Howard, courtside with you. And earlier today, the Mountain West announced the postseason Players and Coach of the Year awards. So let's take a look at who took home the honors. Desi Ray Young from UNLV is the Mountain West Women's Basketball Player of the Year. The senior center led the Lady Rebels to a third consecutive regular season title and the number one seed in the Mountain West Tournament. Young logged the second most points in the league, putting up 343 on the year, leading the conference in rebounds with 164 en route to 12 double-doubles. The Las Vegas native is the fourth player in Mountain West history to be named Player of the Year twice in her career, becoming the second Lady Rebel to win the honor multiple times. The Defensive Player of the Year is Anaya Ogman from New Mexico. Ogman helped the Lobos to a 12-6 league record, averaging over 14.5 points, nearly six rebounds, three and a half assists, and close to two steals per game this season. The junior Lobo shot over 42% from the field and 72% from the free throw line. Ogman is the second Lobo to be named the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, the first since the 2011-2012 season. Naya Wilson from New Mexico is the newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, becoming the seventh Lobo to earn the award. Wilson transferred into the league from Syracuse, immediately making a name for herself in conference action. She is fourth in the league in scoring, averaging over 17 points per game, while ranking 10th in assists with nearly three per game. The Lobo guard earned three Mountain West Player of the Week honors, averaging almost 34 minutes per game for the Cherry and Silver. Lady Rebel standout Amarachi Kimson is both the sixth player of the year and freshman of the year. Kimson earned three Mountain West Freshman of the Week honors while averaging nearly 11 points and two rebounds per game. The freshman guard ranked 17th in the league in scoring, shooting 54.5% from the field and 41% from long distance. The Scarlet and Gray star is the third Lady Rebel to be named Freshman of the Year, the first since the 2012-2013 season. She is the fourth UNLV player to be named Sixth Player of the Year, the third year in a row a Lady Rebel has earned the honor. The Mountain West Coach of the Year is Mike Bradbury from New Mexico. The Lobos leader guided the team to a 12-6 record in league action, en route to a number two seat in the Mountain West Tournament. Bradbury is just the third coach from New Mexico to be named Mountain West Coach of the Year, the first since the 2014-2015 season. Congratulations to our award winners. It has certainly been an exciting season of Mountain West women's basketball, and we're excited to see some of our award winners in action tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Well, don't go anywhere because up next, we will have highlights, stats, and more, and former Mountain West basketball player Jay Thomas joins us to break down the first half. The Broncos up 40 to 19 here in the third first round game of the Mountain West Women's Basketball Championship. Well, I'm now joined by former Mountain West basketball player Jade Thomas. I'm Bridget Howard. Jade, the first half, it was all the Broncos. What did you like from Boise State and Gordy Presnell and the tempo that they came out with? Absolutely. You mentioned the tempo, and I think that's the most impressive thing. Boise State is very disciplined, and they, they don't play that fast. They kind of lull you to sleep, but little do you know that they're doing a lot of actions on the inside and outside, and they're doing in and out, and they're getting the defense to move to get the shot that they want. But it's just the tempo that they can control it, and it feels like Boise's been up this whole game, which they have, but since the tip, it just feels like they have really controlled it 
everything that happens on the offensive and defensive end. Absolutely. They've taken over. And this isn't the first time that these two teams have met in the Mountain West Championship. This is now the second straight season that the Broncos and the Aggies have faced off here in Las Vegas. Well, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. I mean, as you mentioned, Jade, it was all Boise State from the tip. And, and who better to get things started for Boise State than Abby Muse? How about that? Absolutely. She is long and lanky. And it's not surprising because she is first in block shots in the Mountain West. It's really incredible what she's been able to do over her career. And how about that three ball, Maya Hansen? I think what stands out to me about Boise State is just the superiority of their sophomore class. And you look at it, you've got Natalie Pasco, Danny Bays, Maya Hansen, Tatum Thompson. And the experience they got last year is really paying off here in their sophomore season. Absolutely, I agree. And with that class and just the team, you see that this the leading scorer only has 10 points and Boise State has 40 points. So it's a really key emphasis and picture of team basketball. Absolutely, and a number of players, like you mentioned, getting in on the action for Boise State. But how about this? We got a three ball from Utah State. Utah State struggled a bit from the field, 16% from the field in that first half. But again, you're just seeing the production from Boise State. Maya Hansen with the jumper. And Boise State in that second quarter went on a 9-0 run. How about that? You can just see it. It's just, it's fun to watch. And you can tell the girls are having fun playing together. Yeah, when you look at Abby Muse, you said she's tall, she's lanky, but what she's able to do when she's scoring, but what maybe goes unnoticed a little bit, I mean, she's already matched her season high with five assists in this first half. Yeah, that's not something often you see from a big, you know, I think she's trying to be like her point guard a little bit and yep. share the ball, but it's fun to watch her and her point guard bounce off of each other and share the ball and rebound and just do all that you can. Yeah, absolutely. And just again, Boise State, I mean, they're so impressive in so many different areas, but especially, we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but inside, they really found success in the paint in that first half. Utah State, what do they have to do to change that? They have to control the controllables, you know? You, you're not all your shots are gonna go in and that's okay, but what can you do on defense to stop Boise? Can you, you know, try crowding the paint or limit whatever you can? Because Boise State has been doing great, but they're not shooting that well from beyond the arc. So try to crowd the paint and limit what you can on the inside and make them shoot the three ball, make them test it and see what see what happens there. Right, and you mentioned Boise State needs to shoot the three a little more and, and maybe see them go in the net, right? They're shooting 15% from beyond the arc here in this first half. And what stands out to you about the stats right now? I would absolutely say the three-point percentage for Boise State because they're up by so much. So if they start to see that go in, that's a dangerous game. Yeah, it's gonna that score is gonna go up really quick if they can get that three ball going. Well, we look at the shot tracker map here and it, it really looked like everything was going in. You see some red on that map, but a lot of green for Boise State and they're shooting 44% from the field. Uh, what do you like if you're Gordy Presnell from your group? You know what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So <laughs> I would just keep forcing it on the inside. Keep having Mary Kay just keep forcing it on the inside and keep moving the ball because when you move the ball, like I said, you move the defense and that's where they're getting their, their good looks on the inside. Yeah, well, also, I mean, another player we, we need to mention, I think, is Trista Hull. She's coming off a great game versus Colorado State. She had nine points and six rebounds, really getting it done again. And she's a name I don't think we hear enough of on this Boise State team. Absolutely, and I think that's something that I'm glad you mentioned, that sometimes everybody looks at the offensive production and what who scores, but she has nine rebounds going into the second half, and that's an outstanding stat to have, especially when your team is up so much. Sometimes you can get casual or complacent, but she is charging for those boards, and that's an impressive stat to have right there. Yeah, well, Boise State, super exciting to watch. Let's see how this second half unfolds. Stick with us, because coming up after the break, you'll hear from Nate Kreckman and Tammy Blackburn on the call. Boise State side out of bounds to uh, begin this second half of action at the Thomas and Mack Center. Along with Tammy Blackburn, I'm Nate Kreckman here with you on the Mountain West Network. 40 to 19, Boise State a 21 point lead and the basketball, Abby Muse inbounds to Mary Kay Nero. We are underway here in this second half. Abby Muse, 10 points right now. Only Bronco in double figures. They scored 
a whopping 40 spot in that opening half. Tammy, what can Utah State do to start to try and string together some more consistent offensive possessions? One possession at a time, and they have to be quality looks. They can't be shots that are, you know, ill-advised early in the shot clock. If it's a good shot, go. But you're going against a really good defense that's held you to 19 points. You've got to get higher looks. Fifth rebound for Abby Muse. Excuse me, higher percentage looks. Well, it's been all high percentage looks for Boise State here today. Lalotte now in double figures with 10. They're shooting 44% is Boise State. They are 20 of 44. And their assist numbers are impressive. 14 assists on 19 made buckets. Also, that's assist number six for Abby Muse. Tammy, don't look now. We're on triple-double watch. Muse, 10 points, five rebounds, six assists in this game. And there's rebound number six. And she did all that in 12 minutes. She did not even play 20 minutes. She played 12. Pasco got an open three. Has not been able to find the range from downtown so far today. Just one of eight from behind the arc. You get some stops in your Utah State. You can get out in transition and run. You can pick up some quick points. Ball's just not falling through the Aggies. Six of 41. Narrow block from behind by Sugataraga, but there was contact and a whistle. Looked like Sugataraga got her on the head, and she'll check out. First foul on Samiana Sugataraga out of Orem, Utah, transferred from Snow College, two seasons in snow, and Ephraim, Utah, her dad, Jay, played football at Utah State. Quick hook by Kayla Ard, the head coach of Utah State. Pasco hits both. 25 point game. It was 21 at the half. Corner three. Too strong. That was Tierra Hill Brown. A lot to Muse. Got too far underneath, but she got pushed, and she'll go to the line. Missed corner shot there by Hill Brown. She comes in having only shot 18 three-pointers on the season at 22%. Pretty quick shot there in the shot clock. Empty trip to the stripe there for Muse. Last year's Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. This year she was named to the Mountain West All Defensive Team. Another Utah State turnover. The Defensive Player of the Year of the Mountain West, Anaya Augman from New Mexico. Postseason honors dished out today in the Mountain West. Congratulations, Desiree Young of UNLV, named the Mountain West Player of the Year. Wow, nice find. 46 to 19, Abby Muse to Elodie Lalotte. 10 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, Tammy. The ticker continues to go upward for Abby Muse. That time, she got the block, but she also got the body. Newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, Naya Wilson from New Mexico. Amarachi Kimson, the freshman and newcomer, excuse me, and sixth player of the year in the Mountain West. And then the coach of the year is Mike Bradbury from New Mexico. Strong finish to the end of the season for New Mexico coming in as the number two seed. They'll face San Diego State University, who's the number seven seed tomorrow at 5 p.m. This game will settle our fourth and final quarterfinal for tomorrow night. Winner of this one gets Wyoming. 
Wyoming held firm all year long in the top of the standings. Good season for Heather Rizal and the Cowgirls. Maya Hansen roaming to the corner. Stolen away now by Utah State. Tough shooting day for the Aggies. Six of 42 from the field. Stubbs steps inside the arc. Tough two. And we got a foul in the backcourt on Ivory Finley. Second foul called on Finley. That's three team fouls now in the quarter on Utah State. 6.22 now left here in the third. Nero, Lalat, Muse. Too strong on the weak side. That was Hansen for the putback. Does that miss by Muse count as a pass since it didn't hit the rim? <laughs> you know, they used to call it the Kobe assist when he would miss a layup and then Shaq would follow it with a dunk. Unfortunately, they don't count that in the stat sheet. Stub, Stubbs off the mark right there. Now four of 14 from the field. She tried to sidestep a little, sidestep dribble a bit. Another bucket from Hughes. She's got 12. Yeah, the step through, she got leverage on Verdun, turned around and put it in. 12 points, eight rebounds, seven assists for the senior from Brentwood, California. Cross court pass, Finley. That's a good look. Back iron, no good. Baseline jumper short. Pasco followed her shot. Nero pulled down the offensive rebound and then got the follow. Gordy Presnell just laughing at some of the amusement that his team is giving them. A 12 to 1 run, Boise State, here in this third quarter. Verdon had it stripped away and stolen by Lalat. Finley reached in and she got whistled. Third personal on Finley. We got a timeout on the floor. Boise State has grown the lead to 32 with 438 left in the third quarter. Got 438 left in this one. Boise State banging the drums so far, 52 to 20. They lead Utah State, Nate Kreckman, and Tammy Blackburn with you tonight on the Mountain West Network. Tammy will be back with you tomorrow to bring you quarterfinal action along with our friend Krista Blunk here on the Mountain West Network. I will be excommunicated off to desk <laughs> duty for tomorrow. I'll be up there with Jesse Kurtz, Jay Thomas, Bridget Howard. That trio will be carrying me tomorrow here on the Mountain West Network. You know, I, when you name that trio, I don't see how that's a downgrade. I think that's an upgrade <laughs> from me. That's an upgrade from me. <laughs> just saying. My, Not self-deprecating, just speaking the truth. My <laughs> argument is it's a loss for them. <laughs> oh. Here we go. 52-20 to 20 basketball game. Isabella Tenedo, the sophomore from Maryland, into the game now for Utah State. Got a baseline drive and a bucket right there from Sky Miller. Good physical take right there. Got inside, got position, put it in off the glass. More of that from Utah State. Thompson at the elbow, back out to Nero. Left it a bit short. Out of bounds, Boise State ball. They'll reset the shot clock to 20 seconds. Cheyenne Stubbs, Livia Knapp back now for Utah State. Bays, baseline drive. Got it to Thompson, but blocked by Johnson. Her length is a problem for Boise State. Gracie Johnson, the freshman, six, six foot six. six. Yep, she's got good length, good wingspan, big reach. She's got a promising future. Sets the screen for Stubbs. Steps into a jumper in rhythm, no. 
Stubbs having a hard time with that three-point shot. Just that sidestep dribble into that jumper that's not hitting for her. Meanwhile, Boise State continuing to hit at the other end, shooting 43%. They're just, you know, they're, Nate, they're just having their way. They're just getting open buckets. There's just so much space, so much open space for them. And it's because of these misses, Boise State, they're coming down. They really is not a whole lot of time for Utah State to get set in their defense. Sky Miller with some hard contact in the paint right there. Fifth team foul. She clobbered Tatum Thompson. We'll send the sophomore Thompson to the line. Gordy Presnell says Tatum Thompson, one of the most athletic players he's ever coached. In her second year now at Boise State, part of this outstanding sophomore class. Tammy, 90% of last year's scoring back this year for Boise State. And that sophomore class of Pasco, Bays, Hanson, Thompson. This is quite a group that's going to continue to grow together at Boise State. They'll just continue the winning ways for Boise State, not only in regular season, but in the tournament. I mean, Boise State is 17 and 6 record in the Mountain West Conference tournament. They hold the best winning percentage at this tournament. They've won five total. That's tied with New Mexico, by the way, in the Mountain West. A lot of championships, and Gordy Presnell knows how to do it. Stolen away by Cheyenne Stubbs. Stubbs out on the break. Thompson got back, but Stubbs got fouled. You, know, you think about that great era of Boise State basketball when they four-peated from 17 to 20. Don't forget they won the tournament in 15 as well, but some of the names from that era of Boise State basketball, Riley Lubfer, Brady Hodgins, Brooke Powakoa early on in that run, Ashanti Coleman, Jai Rodriguez, legends Riley, at Boise State. Riley Lubfer had one of the sweetest left-handed outside shots I've ever seen. Absolutely sweet. The thing I loved about a Riley Loop for 3-2, they skim the rafters every time. Mm. But she, with that high arcing shot, had so much touch, and she could shoot that thing in a phone booth. And a whistle and a foul as Johnson fouled Hull. Under two minutes to go now in the third quarter in a 32-point game. Boise State has outscored Utah State 16-5 here in the third. Broncos shooting for the basketball game 43% to just 14% for Utah State. How about this for an offensive rebound stat? Boise State, 13 offensive rebounds and 14 second chance points. They've been really hitting it hard underneath the rim and also really reading the ball off the rim on long rebounds from long shots. I mean, they send numbers to the bucket. Hill Brown got it to Mullings on the cut. And she had it swatted away. Both Hull and Thompson were there. I think we'll call that one a team block, Tammy. We had one of those in the first half. Bays whips it across to Pasco, puts it on the floor. Can't get the runner to go. Second chance, and Thompson got. Nope, she stepped out of bounds. Utah Actually, State ball. Jump ball. We called it jump ball. Oh, possession yeah, arrow. Possession then. arrow, Utah State. Lavrovich back up off the bench. She'll replace Pasco. ISO possession for Cheyenne Stubbs and an and one opportunity. She's been waiting for that shot to fall all evening long. Yeah, just the fifth make in 17 attempts here for Cheyenne Stubbs. She's 
three of eight from downtown. This will be a, it was from three, right? I believe she was inside the line to chance at a three point play. Good year for Stubbs. Top 10 Mountain West scoring, field goal percentage, free throw percentage. Gets the steal right there. Made threes, minutes. Well, tell you, she's rewarded for her hustle. Yeah. She is. I mean, she, she does not take a play off, and you have to admire that about her. She doesn't score 16 points and lead this team, and really the only player in double figures for her. Not working hard. She is she is a hard worker. Gives you 33 minutes of all out every game. Transfer from Canisius in Buffalo. She scored 18 on average in two matchups this year against Boise State. She's at 16 here today. Leads this team in steals, and you can see why by the way that she plays. Nice kick out. Bays an open three. That's a good look. Another assist, another bucket. <laughs> Boise State, 17 assists on 25 made field goals. Stubbs again, why not? Now she's feeling it. Step. Step back even a little bit further, too. 20 points now for Cheyenne Stubbs. Leads all scores in the basketball game. Quarter winding down. Got to get it up. Lavrovich can't hit. But Boise State grows their lead in the third. Up 29 as we go to the fourth. Ten minutes remaining in this one as we begin quarter number four at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Game number three of the 2024 Mountain West Women's Basketball Championships. Boise State, a robust lead on Utah State as we get this final quarter underway. Along with Tammy Blackburn, I'm Nate Crackman here on the Mountain West Network. Quarterfinal action starts tomorrow with UNLV and Fresno State at noon Pacific time. Gracie Johnson snatches the loose ball up for Utah State. Nap on the break, back out to Johnson. Straight away three, soft touch. I like it. Gracie Johnson in the off season, put on some muscle, work on those skills, just like every player's doing at that time of the year in the off season to get better. And you'll see a definite upswing in, in her game. She's already coming into this game as a young freshman with skill, getting valuable minutes. You love to see it. Foul was on the floor on Trista Hull. Three now on Trista Hull in this basketball game. And Tammy, Abby Muse is at the scorer's table waiting to check back in. And she gets back in, triple-double watch will recommence. Got a foul away from the basketball as Tierra Hill-Brown went to the floor. Muse back now, she replaces Trista Hull. If you're just joining us, it's been the Abby Muse show in this game, stuff in the stat sheet, 12 points, Eight rebounds, seven assists. She is six of eight from the floor in 16 minutes of action. Floor cleaned up. Inbounds pass over to Hill Brown. Got it back out to Stubbs. The offense in this game for Utah State has been Cheyenne Stubbs, 20 of the 35 points for the Aggies. Muse steps out on her. She's gotten doubled and a foul on Muse, 25 feet away from the basket. 
know, it's interesting when asking Gordy Presnell for keys to the game, the, the one key that I admire, and I, I know a lot of coaches talk about this at this time of the year, is that you've seen everybody, and it, it can be tough this time of the year. Everybody's tired, everybody's sore, everybody's got something. But he wanted his team to be about his team. Yes, they had to do scout. Yes, they had to prep for Utah State. But they wanted to go with what they knew best, and that was how to play Boise State basketball. They have done that. You can check that box. They were on a great stretch run about two, three weeks ago, and they want to get back into that way, and they are. The second key was for them to contain Cheyenne Stubbs. And Stubbs has got 20 points. They haven't necessarily done that, but they haven't let anybody else go off either, Nate. Oh, Christensen, pump fake, put it on the floor and drop it in. The Idaho native, Alyssa Christensen from New Plymouth. First year at Boise State, getting good minutes here this afternoon. And a whistle and a foul. Stubbs will go to the line. They whistle Lobrovich. You know, you talk about 20 points for Cheyenne Stubbs. Yes, on paper, they haven't technically contained her, but Tammy, 20 points on 19 shots. You'll take that every time, that kind of efficiency. They've made it tough on Cheyenne Stubbs today as she just scored her 21st point, but it has been a high effort 21. 30 minutes of play, and nobody else on the team has more than five points. So Stubbs has got... 21 with that made free throw. Nobody else. Johnson's got five. Other than that, you've got a couple threes and a couple twos. You know, the coaching staff for Boise State said, one goal, beat whoever is in front of us. Bays knocks down the triple. Second from behind the arc for Danny Bays. Last year's all freshman team. 30-point game now for Danny Bay, or excuse me, 30-point lead for Boise State. That would have been the story. But a 30-point lead for the Broncos. Beat who's in front of us, game number one, Utah State. Broncos met that challenge today. Tomorrow it'll be Wyoming. Muse goes up and gets that rebound. That's rebound number nine now for Abby Muse. Nero, long pass to the corner. Bays had a good look. Oh, and the loose ball. And Bays is feeling it. Bays cleans it up. She's kind of in her element right now. Gordy Presnell knows it too. Hill Brown, a turnaround. Knocked it down from the nail. To narrow on the cut from Muse. That's an assist. That's number eight. One rebound and two assists away from a triple double. Six minutes to go in this one. Stubbs catch and shoot three. She got an open look. And there you go. Rebound number 10, double double accomplished. 12 points, 10 rebounds for Abby Muse. Couple assists away. Christensen, the offensive rebound off of Muse's miss. Nero over to Bays. Oh, she measures it. A whistle and a foul underneath. And yeah, they called that one on Abby Muse. Her third. Third foul oh, for number 33. Out of the game, Nate. Oh, she's coming out of the game. Maybe. She might come back in. 5.36 to go. Hard to imagine that Gordy Presnell would tempt fate in that way. With a match with Wyoming in the quarterfinals coming up here. For the sake of the broadcasters and the fans on hand, I wish to publicly lobby Gordy Presnell from the broadcast position to put her back in the game. <laughs> Here's the thing. 
He doesn't know. He doesn't know what her line is. <laughs> and neither does Abby. If indeed that is it for Abby Muse, what a game today. Oh, yeah. 12 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists in 20 minutes of action. And, you know, this game, which is going to be a wire-to-wire -wire victory for Boise State, Tammy, they really got it going in the opening quarter. And it was Elodie Lalotte and Abby Muse and Utah State in their zone defense. They really just had no answer for it. And again, they feed it inside to Lalotte and she gets fouled. You wonder if there'll be a little, let's say Muse doesn't play, she does, or doesn't play the rest of the game, she doesn't get a triple-double. You wonder if there'll be a little friendly nudging maybe in the post-game presser <laughs> if she's the one, or maybe on the bus ride home, you know, where it's like, all of a sudden he looks, he goes, oh, she was only two away. Hey, coach, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's all about team, you know, it's not about personal accolades and while a triple-double would be incredible and amazing and well-deserved and well-earned, uh, this is about team and what they're here to do and that is to advance one game at a time. How many triple-doubles did you uh, rack up in the career, Tammy? Are we back on that again? <laughs> be a big goose egg in the media guide. Not an easy thing to do. No. Smith off the mark on that triple. And a tough shooting day for Macy Smith for Utah State. Just one of eight from the field. Christensen puts it on the floor. Gets position. Pump fakes. Looked like Lauren Crocker got a piece of it. On the drive, an and one opportunity for Ivory Finley. Junior transfer from UMass Lowell, originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We got a timeout on the floor. Finley goes for the three-point play. When we come back, first round action of the Mountain West Tournament. So big news here at the Thomas and Mack Center, triple-double watch, which we had uh, prematurely written the obituary on has found new life Tammy Blackburn Abby Muse has checked back into the game with 436 to go two assists away from a triple double here at the Mountain West tournament so when that break was called I was watching the staff of Boise State and I'm pretty sure in fact I know uh, a member of the staff told Gordy she's two away and Gordy went down and put Muse back in. She checked in at the break at the scores table, went back into the huddle, and here we are. And I think that's fantastic. Cheyenne Stubbs thinks it's fantastic that that ball was deflected directly into her hands. Gets Utah State out with some tempo. Finley shuffled her feet, no whistle, step back, well short. And Christensen comes away with it. Now, Abby, in this possession, we need you to pass the ball. <laughs> <laughs> we are, of course, just teasing. Use at the elbow, down to Christensen. Well defended. Hughes got a hand on it, tipped it over to Jada Clark. That might count. She had a hand on it. We'll check the official scoring sheet to see if they give her an assist on that one. The question is pass or inadvertent deflection. They have not put the assist into the stat sheet yet. Smith too strong, pulled down by Boise State. Jada Clark in the game, junior from Richland, Washington in her third season at Boise State. Used to pass go in the corner, dribble drive, floater up and in. And indeed, the assist is given to Abby Muse, so that's assist number nine. Oh, you have to give it to her on that one, two yeah. dribbles. Yeah, we're one away. Steal by Boise State. I'm not jinxing it, I'm just staying quiet. 74-42, <laughs> inside three minutes to go. Muse out to Pasco. 4-3, that's good, and that's a triple-double for Abby Muse here at the Mountain <laughs> West Tournament. Timeout called, Abby Muse, 12 points, 
10 rebounds, 10 assists. An historic night at the Thomas and Mac for Abby Muse of Boise State. A triple-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists in 22 minutes of action. Tammy, I mean, double-doubles, nothing uncommon for Abby Muse in her Boise State career. 10 assists. This has been something to watch tonight. And then she just adds a block for good measure. At this point, Abby Muse just showing off. Congratulations to Abby Muse. And you can't tell me that whole team did not know. What's remarkable is that when she went back out on the floor after Gordy checked her back in, knowing that she needed just two for a triple-double, he went down the bench and notified the whole team. And they were just waiting. They were absolutely waiting to celebrate their teammate. That's what you just love about sport and teammates. And I'll tell you who's a good teammate, Natalie Pasco, for drilling that last three. And it was just so epic from <laughs> her in that spot as well. But, I mean, they all came out to greet her, you know, just being happy for one another. I mean, I, I just think that that goes, goes such a long way, and it shows you about what kind of chemistry this team has. You know, this has been an up-and-down season for Boise State. They had an 8-2 and two stretch kind of in the middle of conference play. Looked like they were playing their way, at least in a contention for a first round bye, but they've lost three in a row coming into the conference tournament. Lost a tough one at UNLV in a game that they led and gave away the lead. Lost at home to Air Force, first time Air Force has ever won at Boise. Into the game, by the way, is Sydney McQuieter. Missed off that look. And then they lost at CSU. End of year fatigue really kind of got this Boise State team. But assistant coach Carrie Ann Ramirez said more pep in the step the last couple of days in practice. And this team came out here in their first game of the Mountain West tournament. And they showed they're ready to turn the page. And... Bridget Howard will have a conversation with Abby Muse in the post-game show, so a chance to hear from Muse off of her first career triple-double. Steal in the backcourt and a bucket for Macy Smith for Utah State. We got another foul. Caitlin Burgess in the game now for Boise State. Senior transfer from Auckland, New Zealand, her third year in the program, number 11. In a minute 15 to go, Boise State also a bucket away from putting 80 points on the board. Tammy looking ahead in the tournament. Boise State, Burgess got an open three and drilled it. Get off the bench, knock down a three. Boise, Boise State's eight and two well, against their side of the bracket, and they're five and one against the teams. If it goes chalk, they were two and zero oh this year against Utah State. One and zero, oh, one and one against Wyoming, who they'll see tomorrow, and then two and zero oh this year against New Mexico. The first time they lost was back in December, 61-47 to Wyoming. Look at that play. Yeah, that was McQuieter to Allie Heckman who laid it in. McQuieter, who just checked into this ball game, makes a heck of a pass. But yeah, back to that point, is December 30th, the first time they lost to Wyoming, really the only time, because they beat them. They turned that around. They held Wyoming to 42 points, Nate, on February 10th. Well, on March the 10th, they've held Utah State to 46. By the way, three-point play for Allie Heckman. Three-pointer in the corner is good for Tierra Hill-Brown. Hill-Brown will get to finish off her season with a made three on what is likely her final field goal attempt. Nearly stolen. Boise State breaks the press. Mackenzie Narrow gets it over to Jada Clark in Boise State. 
will dribble out the clock. Final score this afternoon at the Thomas and Mack Center, 85 to 49. Boise State with the victory. Abby Muse, first triple double in Boise State history in the Mountain West tournament. 12 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. Boise State will take on Wyoming tomorrow. Jesse Bridget and Jade have your post game show for Tammy Blackburn. I'm Nate Kreckman. Boise State wins in advance. A nearly flawless performance here in the first round of the Mountain West Women's Championship in Las Vegas as the Boise State Broncos route. Utah State 85 to 49. It is the largest Mountain West tournament win in Boise State history. And this is a program that's had a lot of success on this stage. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Thomas and Mack Center. Jade Thomas, former Mountain West basketball player herself. Jesse Kurtz, Bridget Howard is down uh, courtside. Let's waste no time and get down to Bridget Howard, who's standing by with the head coach who uh, is celebrating a pretty big milestone with this victory here tonight. Jess, to your point, Coach, first things first, congratulations on 750 collegiate wins. 30th head coach in women's basketball history to do so, so congratulations. Oh, thank you. I've been around a lot of good assistant coaches and a lot of good players and really fortunate to get to coach this long and uh, what a great group of kids we have this year. Yeah, well, Coach, we were just talking about this. We've seen a lot of you at the Mountain West Tournament, but I don't think I've ever seen that much emotion from you on the sidelines than we did tonight. How much fun were you having? Having watching this group compete tonight. You know, it was really fun to see those kids get some success and Abby get a triple double and Allie hit her first shot of the season. And it's just, uh, it was, it warms my heart. Those guys are really good people. And a week and a half ago, you know, we were in second place with 19 wins and the end of the season, we're the sixth seed with 19 wins. So uh, it's good to get on the right track. Yeah, well, you mentioned Abby Muse with the triple double. It's just the third triple double in Boise State women's basketball history. Is there anything that Abby Muse can't do? Uh, you know, she's a heck of a player. We're fortunate to have her. Uh, you know, long, long athlete and uh, just uh, really happy for her tonight. Well, Coach, we'll let you get to celebrating. We might see a Gordy Gritty tonight. I think this <laughs> might deserve one of those, but Coach, congratulations. Oh, too much TV. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Jess. It's our life, Coach. We live on TV. Of course, we watch a lot of TV. Yeah, Abby Muse, what a, what a fantastic game. And you played a lot of basketball. Uh, triple doubles are very rare. You have to be so good in so many different ways to reach that. How impressive is a triple-double on this stage in the postseason? It's really impressive, especially because you mentioned at this stage in the season, it's lose or go home, and so she yeah. showed out tonight. She was there on the, on the boards. She scored. She helped her teammates. So just to be everywhere on the stat sheet and to stuff it, especially in this point in the season, it's amazing to see. Let's go back down to the court side and hear from the star of the game, Abby Muse, standing by with Bridge. I don't even know if star of the game does enough justice for what Abby Muse did tonight. Abby, triple-double, the third triple-double in Mountain West Tournament history. Oh, so congratulations, wow. 12 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. What were you feeling out there? We were just feeling loose. We were feeling the flow of the game. My teammates were hitting. We were getting rebounds. We were scoring. It was just fun from start to finish. It was a good time. It looked like you guys were having a lot of fun. And we just talked with Coach Presnell, and I don't think we've seen that much emotion out of him at any of the Mountain West tournament games we've seen him at. I mean, what does a game like this do for an energy of the team in March? Well, tournaments are all about momentum. So starting off Sunday today with this game is huge and is just great momentum going into the tournament um, as it starts for real tomorrow. So. From top to bottom, it seems like any player that comes off the bench or starts for this team is able to get the job done when they're on the court. How much relief does that give you guys as starters when you know that the bench can come in and perform? I mean, they had 39 points tonight. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's not a surprise. Um, bench is awesome. It makes the starters drop way easier knowing that we have people who can come in and just not miss a beat, um, not drop off at all. And coach always says it's not, great teams don't win with their, you know, first five. It's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. you know, everyone off the bench. And so that really showed tonight, I think. You've made a lot of history in your career at Boise State. It's just the third triple-double in Boise State program history. So what is it like to be a history maker? <laughs> that is crazy when you say that. Um, obviously, that's not the goal. The goal is to win. Um, but making a little history along the way is kind of fun. Yeah, of course it is, right? All right, well, you get a matchup with Wyoming mm -hmm. tomorrow. You guys split the regular season yep. series. 
What is a game like that here in the Mountain West tournament going to look like for you guys coming off a win like this? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a battle. Every single game in the tournament is going to be a battle, and um, we're looking forward to it. They have some really good post players um, and a solid team overall, and so we're excited to go to battle tomorrow. Abby, congratulations. It's always a pleasure getting to talk with you. Now go say hi to your fans. I'm hearing people cheer for you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> Back to you, Jess. The beauty about March is it gets ratcheted up, the the, uh, the stakes, the competition. So the competition gets even tougher. The stakes get even higher with the next round. But what a performance tonight by Abby. Absolutely. I agree. And I kind of like what she said about the momentum because sometimes you just you look at her chart right there. Yeah. You can see all the green inside. She did her work inside like she was supposed to. And she excelled in just every area that she needed to. Uh, to take it a step further on what Abby did tonight and the, the history and the rarity that is a uh, triple-double, there have been only two other triple-doubles in Mountain West history. Chelsea Hopkins did it in 2013 for San Diego State, and Shauna Thorburn did it for Utah back in 2006. What's significant about those two players, they were just named to the all 25th season team. So you're talking about two of the all-time greats that have ever suited up uh, in a basketball uniform in Mountain West women's basketball. Abby Muse joined them, joined them here tonight. So that just puts an exclamation mark on what was a very special night for her. But all around, it wasn't just her night. 13 total scores on the stat sheet for Boise State. Four in double figures. And of course, Elodie Lalotte, one of the best players uh, here for the last couple of years for Boise State. She was one of those in double figures. 12 points here tonight. Yes, yeah, her big body is just making a presence down there and getting position in there. And she fights for every board. And she has a really good motor. And just watching her inside and finishing is really important. And I think she did a great job with that today. And the rebounds just off the charts tonight for the Broncos. 67 total rebounds. That is the most all season for this team that prides itself in hitting the glass. And it's the most ever in a single game in Mountain West history. When you're able to get rebounds like that, not only are you starting to wear down your opponents, but you're getting second half or second chance points, which leads to all kinds of scoring opportunities. Absolutely. And I think it just goes along to what Boise State does and what their system is. You saw it was going to Muse down low to her, and they're just right when when Muse got it in the high in the high post, she would flash in and it was just perfect timing every single time. And that's what they wanted to do, and that's what they got tonight. So it's a lot with twelve. Uh, Muse with 12, Pasco with 10, Hull had 10 points here tonight, and what a game uh, she had. She went 10 and 10, second career double double. I mean, it was just everybody for Boise State pulling down rebounds, scoring, and chipping in here tonight, and even shooting from the outside. Absolutely. And like Abby said, it was fun, and it was fun to watch, and they looked like they were having fun, and I think those are the best team wins you can have. Well, it, as we said, it does get a little bit tougher here as the Boise State Broncos uh, continue. Gordy Prez now has 19 tournament wins. That is second all-time in Mountain West history. He just passed Elaine Elliott, the great head coach for Utah, with 19 tournament wins. And that bottom a spot in the quarterfinals here tomorrow. They'll take on the Wyoming Cowgirls in our nightcap here at the Thomas & Mack Center. Quarterfinals are set. UNLV, the top-ranked team in the Mountain West, they'll get Fresno State. Nevada will get Colorado State in the 4-5 game. And then we saw San Diego State earlier tonight advance past San Jose State uh, to get New Mexico and then Boise State. A lot of uh, success here. Don't count the Broncos out, especially when they shoot and rebound like they did here tonight. What do you like most about what sets up tomorrow in the quarterfinals, Jade? Oh, I love it all. It's March. I think I really like Wyoming and Boise State because they're, t they're two teams that want to control the pace. When they are uh. controlling it, they're slow. They're lulling you into their system. That's when they're the best. So it's kind of the battle of who can control it, yeah. who can control the best. Boise smart, Wyoming smart. Which program is going to end up on top? Well, you got to play clean basketball here at the Thomas Mack Center if you want to advance. And things get so, so fun here as we move on to the quarterfinals. And it was earlier today, Fresno State, Keeley Brown punching the ticket for the Bulldogs of Fresno State after they knocked off Air Force. A few hours later, it was Abby Prohaska and Megan Fizo, the win over San Jose State. 
And now the Boise State Broncos. They join the Bulldogs and the Aztecs in the quarterfinals tomorrow. We'll tip things off at noon here at the Thomas and Mack Center. For Bridget Howard, for Jade Thomas, I'm Jesse Kurtz saying so long from fabulous Las Vegas. We'll see you right back here tomorrow afternoon.